This is the Transport Delta by Second Dynasty. I've printed it in Legion scale. It's a fully playable interior 3D printed ship. And I'm gonna show you how I made and painted it. You are now embarking on a huge 3D printing project. So it's no surprise I started by 3D printing. But there were a couple of things I had to get past. First of all, I did it at 125% to put it into 35 mil. It's actually a 28 mil ship. And when I did that, I may have printed quite a few parts and forgotten to 125% them. So I ended up with missing pieces and yes, reprints, a lot of reprints. The other thing was there were some supports in there. Ben totally redesigned the back end for me to get rid of the supports, which is absolutely awesome. And that version is gonna be on the Kickstarter. I'm not a fan of supports and neither is Ben. This is one of his earlier ships. And if you look at his latest ones, they're all support free. And over time, hopefully this one will get updated, especially if you guys all show interest and go and buy it. But this is an example of one piece that needed support and it's really hard to work out how you would print this without supports to be honest. I used tree supports from Prusa and it's the first time I've used Prusa Slicer, my Cura broke so I had to move over and I did find it a little bit challenging but generally they do pop off, they just need a little bit of cleanup with an X-Acto blade. One of the main attractions of this ship to my mind is the playable interior. I just need to make it up. It's kind of like a parts box at the moment. But unlike Lego, this doesn't work straight out of the box. Now this is the standard open lock clip system. And open lock clips print with these annoying supports. They're there so that the top actually prints. And I get rid of them in my designs by printing every other hole, so a printer will be able to bridge it no problem. But a printer couldn't print in midair across the whole of this. They just couldn't, this tile is too long. So instead I clipped them all out and there are literally hundreds of them, hundreds of them to clip out. What I did discover later was actually just twisting them out with a set of pliers without clipping first is a lot, lot neater. So next time, and actually for the second half of this project, I went through and I did a bit of cleanup at the end like this, but I mostly just twisted them out with pliers no matter which way you do it, there's still hundreds. For large projects like this, organisation is key. And besides looking cool on YouTube, I also laid out all my parts and realised I had eight missing. A few quick reprints later, all at the wrong size, so I had to redo them all at 125%. I then had my ship put it all together. It's actually easier to put it flat on the workbench. It fits neatly into this interior and it's modular so you can swap it around if you want. But the smugglers tunnels that are built in that are really cool just mean it's easier to put it on something flat. And this is where the fun begins. Painting. This brings it all to life. So I took it all outside and sprayed it matte black car paint. It's nice and sticky, gives it a good base coat for everything that comes afterwards. But first, I probably need to explain something. These just clip together. And even though I've done it at 125%, the clips work fine. They're just bigger too. It's really, really simple. Insert clip, there's three or four for each piece. Push together and repeat for every other part. Cue epic early morning painting montage of this big boy. Oh, actually ships are girls, aren't they? This big girl. So I sprayed the interior with anthracite by Montana. It's just a glossy off black, so it's a dark gray. Really nice color for the floors, which if you look on all the pictures are actually black or were black before they were weathered. The exterior is painted in Montana shock white. Now, this is slightly yellowy and it went on incredibly grittily. Now I know I sprayed it deliberately as a dust coat, not as a heavy coat, so that it would look blotchy, so it would show through later as an effect, but actually it really sucked. So, hmm. But it's looking good, even if it is a little gritty. Fast forward a month whilst I started off my Kickstarter. How have I managed five minutes in a video without mentioning that, you wonder? Well, the Transport Delta is available on the Kickstarter as an add-on and it's running now. It's lava terrain, links down below and probably one of those card thingies floating around on a screen somewhere. 
But back to the Transport Delta paint job. It was really sucky. I mean, it was bad. So I ended up just rubbing a lot of the worst of the paint off. It just came off on my clothes. It came off everywhere. It was just this white powder or even a sort of slightly cream powder. Yuck. Really not impressed. I mean, it looks gritty and it got it through the photos for the Kickstarter campaign, but oof, yeah, not the way to go. So once I got it ready to paint again, it was time to put down a much better paint finish to start doing the final job with. And for that, I wanted my airbrush. Just one snag. This is my airbrush booth. The Transport Delta, sadly, is just a little bit too big. So that meant splitting it into manageable sections and hoping to avoid the issue I'd got with the first primer coats where you can see the top and the bottom don't quite match. And to start, I'm pre-shading. Now I've done this a lot recently and I like it with layer lines because it distracts the eye from the layer lines and you can see them quite clearly in this shot. This technique basically says put on a dark colour, I'm using just black primer, and paint thin layers of your base coat over the top. If you don't put enough layers on, you end up with really stark black lines like this. So you actually need two, three, maybe even four coats built up. Now I did two and I'm leaving the rest for the hand painting. Time to renew my love affair with the sponge. And what I want to do is add some more of the light top coat over the black lines. I deliberately hadn't done it all with the airbrush because I wanted a more uneven patchy coat and an airbrush always gives a nice smooth finish. Well, hopefully. Now I'm using a slightly thinned off-white paint. It's off-white because I've added a small amount of grey to it. It still covers well, it won't bead when you put it on like over thinned acrylic will and it covers up any of the remaining black lines and gives them a mottled effect. You noticed earlier I tried to do the grey panels with a sponge, it just didn't look good. So I redid them with a brush, much easier. Now one of the great things about this job is I can watch Star Wars at lunchtime and call it research. The other thing I did was I got the Haynes manual for the Millennium Falcon and interesting to note there is a central cockpit version you can get as a Corellian light freighter. So this is like a sister to the Millennium Falcon rather than a Millennium Falcon itself. This book has been brilliant when trying to work out what markings to do. I went with this Lando version as opposed to the Millennium Falcon version. I mean, it's a sister ship, so it's not exactly the same as either of them. But when it came to weathering, I probably went for a dirtier version than the Lando version, but way cleaner than the Millennium Falcon. I experimented with painting a thin first coat for the blue, which is just a bog standard artist acrylic blue, and I've thinned it so that it would pull away from the edges because it's a semi-gloss, and I wanted to see what that would look like. Short sure answer, not good, but I put the second coat on anyway. Meh, it's just not in the right place. So I got my foam disposal brush because it's got a nice straight edge and it enables me to do the edges of the panels with a sponge, so more sponging here. It's a, it's the same colour as I've used on the main coat, so it's a white grey. And I go along and I just dab the edges as if it's been worn. It's actually a really simple technique. You can even use it to add some scratches. Oh, but that's intense, isn't it, that blue? Not to worry, if you put the same paint we've been using before, the white grey, if you put that over the top, well thinned down, and dab it off with a paper towel, you get a much more toned down version. And this is actually how paint often weathers. It gets a kind of whitish coat on the outside, and that's when when you polish your car, it often goes much brighter. But now we really need to start the weathering, and I'm using bog standard artist acrylics again. Why? Because they're cheap available, and it's a big spaceship. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw umber, and you're good to go. A thinner one to put it on and a thicker one to wipe it off. Now you saw the beading a minute ago. I'm using this white matte medium, which dries clear, to thin things. It makes the paints more translucent. So when you streak them on with the small brush, they don't put half as much color down as if you'd used a neat acrylic paint. And they don't bead on the surface if you just thinned with water. You stroke everything out with a brush or wipe it off with a paper towel until you get the effect that you want. And the effect we want here is the runoff where we've had rain washing rust and crud and other stuff down the hole. So it starts at the top, 
especially on the top, and then runs down to the side, down the sides, and then underneath. And because it's on the bottom, I made it a lot heavier. It's had more stuff to run down to there. The top is very subtle by comparison to the bottom, and I take my time to build it up in layers. It is much easier to put some on, take it off, put some on, take it off, than put too much on, and then try and take it off again. If you do put too much on though, dampen your paper towel and it will come off a right treat. I also use the same technique, putting on acrylic paint, wiping it off, to fill out some of the panel details. It's really important on a ship like this with layer lines that you don't just shove a wash on and let it sit in everything, all the layer lines. You need to make sure that you're kind of reducing them. And sometimes that means you almost have to paint the wash on where you want it and use a thicker acrylic. And sometimes you can get away with a thinner one and do more of a streaking effect. Black pigments are not for the faint hearted. They are actually quite scary because they can be hard to get off a grainier matte paint this is semi-gloss, so if I got it wrong, I could just take some off with a wet, damp paper towel, but it's still stained a little. And I almost did the first lot the wrong direction, because I did them going out the side, like I'd just been doing the water streaks, but they needed to come front back, so I actually needed to get rid of some of those streaks and then redo them going the right way. It might be scary, but when I'm finished, this part is actually one of the parts that sells to me the whole of the ship, the upper level the most. It really says I'm a used, battered freighter. These are MIG Productions pigments and they weren't out of stock for ages, but they stick so much better. I tried some Vallejo pigments and they just wouldn't stick to this at all. Moved on to using MIG Productions and they stuck beautifully. So your pigments do make a difference. These are just beautiful and Industrial City Dirt, this colour here, is probably one of my favourite colours along with Factory Grey. So, I put it on running front to back, and that is to show the streaking that comes, not from water runoff, but from flying through an atmosphere. The underneath got the same treatment. Then to seal it in so you could handle it, I took it outside and used a matte rattle can spray. I think it was plastic coat matte sealer. And that's the outside done. Woohoo! Time to go inside. Looking at the pictures, it's very clear that Lando is much cleaner than Han. Now, if you remember back, these parts have been sprayed in anthracite, a slightly glossy paint. And I went over the areas that didn't want to be that colour with an acrylic paint, and it took forever. I'd done about 10 pieces, there was an hour in, it really wasn't working, but I've got some pieces like this one that are mixed, floor and wall. Part of modelling is knowing when to cut your losses, and I did not have time to hand paint everything. So as you can see, I took them outside in the nearly darkness, spray painted them with Tamiya Grey. And this is just on the walls, I left the floors. But some of the pieces have both. They have walls and floors. So I masked those. I did a rush job, I actually only leaked in one or two places and by the time they're weathered, it doesn't really show. But it immediately makes the interior look just more visually interesting. We've now not just got a sea of black. But what's the best way to grubby it up? Well, I tried a black wash, eh, no, it just didn't do anything for me. It sat in the layer lines, which to be fair, my technique did as well, but it just beaded. To me, a fine gray is also quite a glossy primer. So that one went away and out came the black gray I've been using on all my lava. It's warm gray and black mixed together to create a sort of dark gray. I thinned it a bit with water and this is where the paper towels really came in. And actually this is the perfect technique for something this big. You smear on some slightly diluted, but fairly thick still, acrylic paint. Acrylic because it's easy to wipe off and if it isn't coming off, you can add a bit of water and it will clean up more easily. I did thin it quite a bit to get it into the cracks to bring out the detail that's in all of those floors that would just get lost otherwise. But you don't want it so thin that it beads on the surface. So it's a bit of trial and error till you get a mix. Once you've got the piece covered, and then quickly wipe it all away with a bit of kitchen roll. Now, if it's sticking too much and you can't get the paint off, dampen your towel a little bit and keep going, keep scrubbing. There's one downside to this method and it's one of my pet hates. You've guessed it, layer lines. This really does bring out the layer lines. The more you scrub, the less there is in there, but it still ends up creating quite a lot of noticeable streaks and lines, especially on the cabinet panels and things like that.
What I like about this technique is even on flat surfaces that are completely smooth and slightly glossy like this, when you scrub it off, you can leave some on and you get a slight patina of the color and it just dirties everything down. It works really well. Many paper towels died to bring you this interior. I've reassembled it and I was done, except I wasn't. I had that moment you all have when you think, yes, I'm finished, yes, what a relief, I'm over the hump. And then you remember you haven't actually painted all the details in. So I kept the details as simple as possible. A little bit of blue on the screens, which I then decided I didn't like. A quick check of the colours says mustard. Mm -hmm. I used Army Painter speed paints for this. I got the original ones and this is just a yellow. Mustard really isn't my colour, so I went for red on the beds. I'm sure it's wrong, I'm sure you'll write that in the comments, but hey, it's a sister ship, and this ship, they have red blankets. Then I decided that having sprayed it grey last night, really the cockpit should be darker. So I actually went over it with a black speed paint. It's not as grey. I didn't want it to just suck the light, which is what it was doing before. So now it's grey with a black wash over it, a sort of speed paint wash over it. I impatiently hair dried that and then tried to use Gundam markers to add some blue and orange spots, but they just didn't deposit enough paint. So I moved on to gel pens and these did a much better job. Now, to be honest, if I'd had more patience to wait for the speed paint to dry, it probably would have gone a lot easier. And this time I really am done. Wow, I really do love this spaceship and I'm actually quite proud of my paint job on it too. Um, designed by Second Dynasty, you can currently get it on my Kickstarter if you want. That's available, links down below. It is a really cool playable spaceship. I know someone's going to ask in the comments just how much does it weigh and how long did it take to print. I printed it alongside other stuff. I have no idea. And I have no idea how much it weighs because I only have kitchen scales and it's too heavy for those. But I have had a real blast painting it. It has been so much fun. And now I'm looking forward to playing on it. Anybody want to teach me spec ops? And I can't get to the end of the video without thanking my YouTube channel members, my Patreons who give me money every month and keep me going, quite frankly. And also to say I have a Kickstarter for Lava Terrain running at the moment. This is an add-on to it, as I mentioned, so you can buy it there if you've bought the campaign. Please go and support me. I really could do with a few more people chipping into that campaign so the tax man's happy. That's it for now, and next week is a Lava Duel. I have the high ground. Literally, I, I built it.